Hey, welcome back to the Gilbertson Aero Factory. Today is Monday, the 22nd of April, 2024. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. The weather is spectacular, no wind, which means I get to have both garage doors open and I get a lot more light on the work that I'm going to be doing today. Um, if you saw yesterday, you know that I got the aileron uh, brackets attached to the left wing and I got the uh, flap brace and the uh, aileron gap fairing fitted, they're ready to be riveted. So that's all I'm gonna try to get done today. I still have other stuff I'm supposed to be doing. I did wanna show you what I was trying to describe yesterday with the, the bucking bar that I had to use um, up here to get these, uh, the rivets, the, the rivets that are adjacent to sort of like not intersecting 90 degrees with that reinforcement bar. This is, and I'll try to get out of here so it'll focus. Hopefully this is focusing. This is the, um, the bucking bar that I use the most. It's got a lot, of, it's tungsten bucking bar. It's got a lot of mass. It's nice and thick and heavy, but I can't get that square over the, um, over those rivet heads because the, um, Let's see here. We've got 90 degrees. I have rivet heads right here that interfere with my ability to put a bucking bar on these right here. This skinny little, and I'll just for comparison, this thin little uh, tungsten bucking bar that I think I got from Cleveland Tools because you can get into some tight spaces um, with it like that. The way it works is I can get this part right here, flush on top of the rivet head and just past the, the rivet head that's poking out on this side. So this is what, I, this worked great. So anyways, that's a long and boring talk about uh, special use bucking bars. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna get to this and uh, yeah, I'm gonna build an airplane today. Thanks for being here. All right, here we go. Pretty straightforward work today. Uh, everything was already fitted and clicked on and, and ready to go. So today it was just about riveting on the aileron gap fairing and the flap brace. Um, these are all, uh, okay, uh, attaching to the rear spar. These are all AN470, um, so dash, uh, dash four universal head rivets three different lengths and so I tried to be careful about getting the right length and there were still a couple that I'm like dang it wrong one so I had to drill some out um, and then if you look toward the far end there you see those silver clicos hanging down that's where the aileron gap fairing um, rivets to the top main skin so those are really small and 426 so flush dash three rivets um, which I'll get to at the very end. What I'm working on right here, uh, it's a tricky spot and I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. I explained before that there's a service bulletin that adds some pretty hefty uh, doublers that are, are two pieces of angle to create a channel on the front side of the, um, the inboard aileron bracket, which is where I'm sitting right there. And uh, when you put this, um, the rivet, when you try to rivet the uh, aileron gap fairing, the, the shop head of that rivet is so close to that angle that you can't buck that rivet. You'll, you split the head as you go down. It doesn't get it cleanly. So I made two attempts at it. It's, it is not doable. Um, so I called Vans Builder Support to get their suggestion on what type of... Um, blind rivet to use there they suggested a cherry max it's a structural rivet so i'll order some cherry max rivets from aircraft spruce i don't have any i've never used any but they're good to have in your pocket um and i'm also going to be ordering a cherry max rivet gauge which i didn't know was a thing but uh, it helps you determine the correct um the correct length for a cherry max rivet so I haven't needed them up to this point, but I'm certainly going to need them more in the future. So there you go. I do have to do a little hunting around on um, aircraft spruce to see what other things I should 
be ordering right now because otherwise shipping is just dumb with spruce for you know a small order so anyways uh yeah making my way through here i would say this was two about two hours and ten minutes total work session it could have been shorter but i think that by the time it was all said and done i drilled out six or seven rivets and redid them it's kind of interesting um you see uh, on my rivet gun, I've got the, uh, the cup set uh, for universal head rivets or dome head rivets, whatever you want to call them. And these dash four rivets are actually pretty easy to set. And then every now and then, I, I don't know how, but um, right toward the end, the, um, the rivet gun will... I don't know if you if the the grip just gets weak or maybe um, I don't let off the trigger before I try to take the gun off the rivet and it will that cup set will slip on the rivet and smear it or split it on the the factory head side so uh, unforced errors I suppose anyway so I had to redo a few it's not that big of a deal it's just kind of a time suck but um. And for me, the the dome head rivets are the more difficult ones to drill out, especially because the the if if I have to drill one out, it's probably because I split the the factory head, which means that I don't have a really good place to get started and make sure that the hole that I'm drilling is really centered. So I'll, I'll usually end up starting with a much smaller drill bit to kind of work toward the center before I get close. So in this example, a dash four rivet, that would be an eighth inch or just slightly a few thousands over an eighth inch. So I'll start with a 764 um, to find the, the center and then maybe go to an eighth inch bit, which is still a little bit undersized uh, to try to get the head to break off uh, once I get it. And then if that doesn't work, then I'll go ahead and just grab the number 40 drill bit and get the last little bit. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but the idea is to not wallow out the hole that you want to, you know, you, you want to use that hole again. You don't want to have to try to go up to a much larger rivet. So, uh, let's see here. Where are we at in this thing? Um, Okay, so I've gotten all of those done. I'm super happy with it, um, but I realize that it's time to flip this thing over to get those um, those last remaining ones that attach the aileron gap fairing to the top skin. Um, I did one rivet when the wing was flipped over the other way and right away realized it's just dumb. Uh, the, you got to try to slip the the squeezer on there while holding the rivet in place and it's probably not going to set well. So, uh, this went well, I'm running out of time here on this thing. This is simple, a bunch of flush rivets, squeeze them, no big deal. And then, uh, what's going to happen next is you'll see me go over to the wing stand after I make some space and I'll edit my wing stand or my cradle rather, so that there's a nice little pocket for the inboard end of the spar to rest in. So we don't have to worry about, um, this thing getting bumped off and it sits much more cleanly. So I basically went to the opposite end, made some measurements of where I wanted that notch to be, um, measured the depth of the, the spar at that point to get it where it was going to approximately be level across the length of the thing. Um, line, uh, scribe the lines out and then used my, one of my least favorite tools, skill saw, but it was quick and easy. And uh, here in a second, you'll see that it went in pretty nicely. Um, I made myself plenty of room within the garage to pick up that wing and swing it around very slowly to get it in there without banging into anything or everything. So all's well that ends well. Turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it.